Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is and peace out to the rest of you again. The blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, sign of black in and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. We really shouldn't care if Ahmad Aubrey was caught stealing anything from the construction site unless the house was black owned. This sounds like a very backwards way to think in a very primitive way. That's exactly the way we need to think about this. They did not shoot him because it's something that they think he stole. They may not have even shot him intentionally. The point is they shot him because they followed him and they scared him. But they followed him and they scared him because he was black. That is the truth of the matter. They were allowed to walk around with no, with no arrest and not even having to go to a police station because they're white and he's black. Muhammad Noor righteously fired on someone and came and hit the police car thinking that he and his white partner were in jeopardy and he's in prison for 12 years. Norris and Greenhouse, um, two deputy marshals in Louisiana, are in Angola for decades, 40 years I believe, because they fired at a man who aimed a car at them and um, they did not know that his little boy was in the car and they shot and they killed the boy accidentally and they wounded the father. The father's white, the boy was white, the deputy marshals were black. Um, and many of us thought, well, you know, they really should not have fired at the car. The guy was aiming the car at them as far as, I, as far as what I heard in the report. It was white deputy marshals that said that they didn't feel that they were in danger. The fact is that if George Zimmerman can kill Trayvon and get away with it, at some point we're going to have to be able to get away with certain things and we've never been able to get away with them. If we can't, then there is no justice. Now, if there's not going to be any justice, and it certainly is not going to come from white courts for black victims, then I know we're not ready for a race war. A lot of whites ain't necessarily ready for a race war. And most of the people that will wind up dying would be the ones that weren't even involved in any sort of hate crime, one way or another. So it would be the ones who least deserve to die that would die on both sides more than likely mostly us. We have to remember something. Their presence in the Americas is an invasion. That is an act of war. Their presence in the Americas is an invasion and an act of war. The predominance of English and Spanish throughout the Americas, then Portuguese, then French, is an act of war. They would not have tolerated this being done to Europe. Therefore, you, you don't have to worry about necessarily being fair to their society. You need to worry about being fair to individuals, but not to their society. There's a middle role we can take in how we address this. If Ahmad Arbery was going into that house and he stole something, we should still march for him. We need to do the corrections internally. We should not necessarily be doing these corrections in front of white audiences. What is the reason for this? It's simple. We are prone to say the right things for the wrong reasons. Arabs are prone to do the same thing. I've lived with them and they love to do that, especially when it comes to race matters. Oh, they'll say all the right things and they say them for the wrong reasons. They'll sit up and they'll say, oh, well, uh, uh, Bilal was black. There's no racism in Islam. Uh, there's no superiority of the white over the black or the Arab over the non-Arab. They'll say these and these are true statements, religiously speaking. However, they will still call us slaves. And if you call them a terrorist, they'll cry and they might even take you to court for it, depending on what the law is in a particular country. It is the same thing with white folks. They're doing that, and now we're falling for it. Let's say the right thing, but deep down it could be for the wrong reason. What Mr. Fantastic offered um, is actually something we need to do, an internal correction. But we, when we take these internal corrections, we need to make sure that we do not perform these internal corrections um, to, for the satisfaction of the greater white majority. They don't deserve that kind of satisfaction. They deserve to hear exactly what it is that is unfair to them. So what if he stole a hammer? He's black. You shouldn't have stopped him. You stole the whole country. Ask the creek about that particular region of Georgia. Ask them who actually owns that portion. And there's some other tribes in that area, too, you could have asked. At the end of the day, it comes down to that. They did not. They, they shot him because they followed him and scared him. But they did that because he's black. Actually, they did it because they're white. And this is why it is that while I will be fair to white men as individuals, 
I do not endorse their society. I don't even recognize it as a legitimate civilization with some kind of supposed right to exist, starting with Israel. And these are the reasons why. They're based on oppression of other people, taking their land. And of course, the land you could say belongs to everybody, but they will take land that they will not allow being taken from them. That's why it was that Germany is willing to pay Israel a bunch of money every year. They don't want Israel relocating back to Germany. That's the reason for it. Europe did not want to give them a homeland inside of Europe. But they were willing to give them a homeland at somebody else's expense. And the people at whose expense they gave them a homeland are not our friends or our enemies for that matter. You can ask DJ Khaled about that. Oh, he was willing to run through sisters when it was time to tie the knot and have a baby. He did that with one of his own. End of story. And it's not because of religious reasons either. So let's call this what it is. We do need a correction, but we need it to be internal and private. We can do this. We can spread this without necessarily doing this in front of white audiences. Mr. Fantastic did the live stream. You know what? He's not, he doesn't have a white audience. That's good. I don't have a white audience. From here on out, I think that we should start spreading this message of an internal correction while externally we're still going to back up our own because that's what they're going to do. The McMichaels broke certain rules. They broke certain laws. That was vigilante stuff. So did Zimmerman. White folks backed these folks up. Actually, white folks were divided about them, but they had a backing. Zimmerman did not have to pay for his own, um, uh, his own uh, defense fees. Betty Shelby did not have to pay for her defense fees. Darren Wilson did not have to pay for his defense fees. They went on GoFundMe and people donated and they got the money and GoFundMe was never attacked for such things and never forced to take them down. You see a pattern here? What about Muhammad Nuru? What about Norris and Greenhouse in Louisiana? If they had gotten GoFundMe uh, funds for their defense, guess what would have happened? They would have been shut down. We know how they back each other up. It's time we decide we're going, we're going to back each other up publicly even when someone's wrong. It depending if, if, if the so-called victim is white. Now, if Ahmaud Arbery stole from a construction site and it was a black-owned home, that's when we should abandon him publicly. Oh, the home was black-owned, and the minute white folks say, well, that's unfair and that's racist, you say, burns, doesn't it? Stings, doesn't it? All is fair in love and war. I hope that one day this message is no longer necessary, but in the meantime, I hope it benefits. The blackest of the black. Black heart, black mind, black out.